All right. All right. So this morning, I would, um, and if you want a fuller message, you go back and get the service. It's on YouTube at Harvest TV. The messages are there. I've gotten really, really good. Let me read one of the feedbacks to you. I like this word. I saw it. Who, who has a, I have, I, I need another phone. You know, just give me the, the church Instagram. Um, my, um, my Instagram, they posted already. Chuma Chuma. Single Chuma. God is going to answer my prayers for you by giving you a lovely lady to date, to marry. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look into the camera if we want to see you. <laughs> Praise God. So this comment said this. This comment said this. You know, someone posted this on their story. So when you post on your story, I get to repost most of them. It says, I know you have your church, but please rewatch Pastor Blachie's sermon today. If you, don't find, if you don't find it valuable, I promise to reimburse your data. This message today is a must watch. You know, yeah. So it, I'm just telling you. So you should go back and watch it on social media platforms. You know, it's really good. Amen. And so, so that's it. If you don't follow, go ahead and follow on Instagram. That's why you have a phone so you can go ahead and follow. All right. So... The first part of this message, I'm going to teach about prayer, and I'm going to talk about how to experience clarity, breakthroughs, encounters through prayer and fasting. How to experience clarity, breakthroughs, encounters through prayers and fasting. Will you please turn your Bibles to Amos chapter 6 verse 1? And again, Amos chapter 6 verse 1. I'm going to read the King James and flip over to the message translation. Amos chapter 6 verse 1. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. The Bible says this. It says, Woe to them that at ease in Zion. So let's jump to the message translation. Message is translated very good. Message translation says, Woe, when it says woe, woe means cursed. It's a curse to those who think you live on easy street in Zion. It's a curse is those who think you live on easy street in Zion. And the reason I'm saying so, so I wanted to pay attention to this. The reason why I'm saying so is this. A lot of people, I've seen people that say, I, I, you know, I want to grow spiritually. People that say that I want to go to the next level. But the truth behind going to the next level is this. Every change requires you to take personal responsibility. Every change what requires you to do what? Take personal responsibility. Let me tell you what happens in life. What really happens in life is this. Everybody starts by taking responsibility, at least most people I know. But alongside, they become exhausted and they become helpless. So you will hear something like says, I can't come and kill myself. What can I do? Kesera, kesera. You know, you have to say things like that. And what they've done is that they've just accepted faith. I'm saying don't accept faith. Challenge it. One of the very inspiring stories I read not too long ago was um, Pastor Isaac Oedipo, which is Bishop Deco's son. And he was at that time living in the US and he had those huge diagnosis that was very negative, that was life threatening. And he was giving a testimony of how he came out of it. But something that struck me was this. He said, he said, when he got the diagnosis, he was raised in a spiritual culture of taking responsibility. So when things come, I don't accept it. It did not align with me. I confront it. The reason I'm saying so to you is this. Whatever you don't confront will remain. Yeah. You must know. Whatever you tolerate will not go. So if you, if you tolerate a mess in your life, it will remain there. Let's say that you're dealing with a health situation right now. Or a health situation right now. And you're dealing with it. it. You know, you can just say, I'll be using drugs. And that's it. But you can say, I believe that I can be healed from this. That would be another outcome. Another outcome altogether. What will be, will be, is not always true. And the reason I'm saying so is this. A lot of you have settled. It, it, the word, the actual word is called lent helplessness. What is lent helplessness? Because you've tried so many times and failed. 
You just get to a position where you don't try again. It's length of place. There's no point. You just go. So, you know, when there's fasting and praying, because you pray so much, what's the point praying again? Length of helplessness. But that's not the way God wants you to live. No. That's not the way God wants you to live. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So what do you do? You're going to have to take responsibility. You're going to have to take responsibility. Whatever you don't confront will remain. Just remember that. Whatever you don't confront will remain. Whatever you tolerate will not go. Whatever you don't challenge will settle in your life. And what does, what does take responsibility mean? And I'm saying so because, because take responsibility means this. That, and, and I'm talking about the spiritual approach. I'm taking responsibility spiritually to produce a change. Let me, let me show you something. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. I'm taking responsibility to produce a change. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 27 verse 40. A lady was sharing with, with, with us about testimony how all the ladies in the house, they were not married. And she said, it just got to a point, I said, this cannot be so. That this thing must break some way. And she went on a spiritual exercise until that year, I think two or three of them got married. Sometimes you just have a family. Everybody has a child that has a problem. I I've seen that before. You will see the firstborn, their, their son is deaf. The secondborn, their, their one is autistic. Or you see a family where all of them don't have children. Three kids. No one has a child. Everyone is struggling with not having children. But you can take response and say, this, this, this is a break. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. Look at what Genesis 27 verse 40 says. It says, and by the, and by the sword thou shalt leave and shall serve thy brother and it shall come to pass, and this was the curse of Esau. He says, he says, when thou shalt have dominion, thou shalt break as yoke of thy neck. Look at verse 41. Verse 41 is very powerful. Uh, sorry, not verse 41. Same verse, message translation. I'm sorry. Same verse, message translation. Glory to God. Okay. See what it says. Let's just get that. You shall leave by the sword. Let's read. Once you go. You will leave by your sword, hand to mouth, and you will serve your brother. Do you see? Listen, look at the curse. This is a big curse. He says, you will live by the sword, hand to mouth. And you will serve your brother. That makes in your family you'll be the smallest. He now says, and when you can't take it anymore. What does that mean? Let me say it this way. Sometimes. God allows crisis to push you to a point of change. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So, some of you, if not for the crisis that you had, the strength you have, you will never have it. What you learned, you will never learn it. Even for the crisis you had. But see what the Lord has done with you right now. See what the Bible says. He says, he says, but when you can't take it, and, and that's why if you want to help people, be careful. You know why? Sometimes when you help people, you destroy them. Because sometimes people need to go through tough time to come out of it. Glory to God. So, why is it important to pray? Why is it important to pray? So, why is it important to pray? So, you must remember this. So, this is very powerful. This is really very powerful here today. He said, well, you can't take it enough. So you've been saying that I'm an asthmatic. When well, you can't take it again. You know, one guy told me about how he was in a business and he had done just hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions. He said, Pastor, I, I'm just tired of doing 300, 400, 800 million. I want to break the one billion barrier. He said, what is wrong with one billion that I can't break it? I said, that's good. That's the place you need to be to break it. You need that frustration. Many of you need the gift of frustration. It's a blessing. When you're totally frustrated. Because frustration means that change is at hand. Yeah. Frustration can be a blessing though. Because frustration will make you do what you cannot do by yourself. 
There's a way you will pray because you are frustrated. Glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. All right. So, you need to take responsibility. That's it. That's it. So, you know, uh, someone says, why don't people take responsibility? The emotions take over them. And you're like, I'm just tired. I understand. But you need to what? Take responsibility. Take responsibility beyond your emotion. So why do we pray? I, I'm trying to hurry. I, I'm trying to hurry so that I can jump towards it. So why do we pray? So why do we pray? And what happens when we don't pray? All right. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Yeah. I will need the checkbook soon. Oh, wow. Do you have one now? Where's the checkbook here? It's on always carry. It's still outdated. It's in your car. Please get it for me. Thank you. First Timothy chapter 1, you know, verse 18. All right. This is why we pray. All right. You ready? You know, many people ask these questions. How come, how come, what do you call it? I see the prophecy and they happen. Because prophecy is not, it's not composite, it happens. Not all prophecy happens. Let, let me hold on. And, not all prophecies what happen. I want to ask you a question. Did God tell Moses that he would take Israel into the promised land? Yes, sir. yes or no? Yes, sir. No, talk to me now. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Did, he, did he get there? Yes, sir. The prophecy failed. It never occurred to you. God, the prophecy to Moses was that the prophecy to Moses was that he will be the one to take Israel into what the promised land. But the prophecy failed. So this one here said that hey, God said this really is not the first time God is saying something though. Let me give you an example. One time, just Christ said that, just said to the 12 apostles, he says, The 12 of you will be sitting down with me in my father's house. Is Judas Iscariot there right now? No. The prophecy failed on Judas Iscariot. God told Eli's family that the priesthood who run in their family, did it fail? The reason why is that prophecy can fail. So this one you're like, well, I have a prophetic word. That's powerful. But what you need to know is that when the prophecy that God gives me, what can I do to make this happen? I want to read First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Thank you. I know you have it now. You have it now, right? Good. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Hallelujah. So someone says, well, I've received a prophecy. It's not happening. This is what you have to do. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Let's read. One to go. This church I come into thee, son Timothy, according to what? The prophecies which went before thee. That thou what? He says you will fight for the prophecy. Look at the message translation. Message translation. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. You need to go higher because this is, you're very, you're not at verse 19 yet. He said, he said, Son Timothy, the prophetic word that was directed to you prepared us for this. All those prayers were all coming together for now. You will do well, fearless in your struggle, keeping a firm grip on your faith and yourself. After all, this is a fight. Next slide. Next, keep, keep going. This is a fight. See what it says. There are some who by relaxing their grip on faith and thinking anything goes. You see that? And thinking, ki sera, sera, thinking anything goes. I've made a total mess of their faith. No wonder. You're saying that, and God said this to me, you will just make a mess of your faith. He says they've made a total mess of their faith. So they think their faith is a problem. Meanwhile, they are not taking what? Responsibility. Let me tell you what the prophecy is like. Yeah. So this is a rich guy in our church. He's writing me a check. Oh, writing me a check. Thank you. And then, then they give me the check. The check is for 10 million. Naira. Then I put the check on my head. You know, I put a check on my head. Hey, 10 million, I have 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million. What does it make? I need to enforce the check by going to the bank. 
The problem is that you are carrying God's promises and forcing through prayer. Prayer enforces prophecies. Until the check is in my bank and it's cleared, I don't have value. So you're saying, to, hey, God said I will marry, God said I will marry. But that's not enough. Can you enforce it? So Paul was telling Timothy that you have received prophecy. Hey, what do you do? Enforce the prophecy through prayer. Enforce the prophecy through prayer. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. I've ever seen a case where a judge says, release this man. Take over the land. Yeah, the man cannot take over. No, talk to me now. There's even a case like that in our nation now. The court says, put him on bail. They would have held him, said, no bail. Because, because there's a difference between authority and power. So what do you do when a God gives you an order and says, well, this land is yours. People need to vacate it. That's authority. The judge cannot, see, if you like take the judge to the land, they will not listen to the judge. What the judge can do is to give you what? An injunction. What do you do? You now look for those that have power. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Either they are area boys, or they are policemen, or they are soldiers, or they are mopo. You now say, based on this authority, vacate the land. They will now go with their power to vacate it. What prayer does is this. God has given you a promise. Let's enforce the promise. Are you here? I said, are you here? Yes, sir. I said, are you here? Yes, sir. It's time to enforce the promise. Oh my God. It's time to what? Enforce the promise. Is there a promise of God about your marriage? It's time to enforce it. Is there a promise of God about your job? It's time to enforce it. Is there a promise of God about your health? It's time to what? This one we're fasting and praying. Ah, this year no carryover. I don't know if you heard me. I said this year no carryover. Uh uh. There are some things I've been praying about that must happen this year. Why? We are going to enforce it. Uh uh. We are going to enforce it. Uh uh. Uh uh. Every year, same number one prayer request. In 2020, same thing. 2021, same thing. 2022, same thing. 23 is going. Ah, nah. And, and this prayer request, I, I received a prophetic word two years ago saying this was done. Then it's my turn. It's my turn to enforce it. Your, your friends can be easy eating cakes, waffles, and all of those things. That's not your business. How is that your business? That's not a business at all. I'm going to get to a place of prayer because there are things to settle. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say glory to God. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and pray one minute. Are there things you need to enforce? Go ahead and pray. 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 Manga yega ba, koma lega da ya shagala mante. Apa lega prate kasko bele. Shaka da ponte skevri da vasaya. Shaka te 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 vilentis. My God. E prus kavate skevile to manante. Akube skivati la sa. Shakwate keti la krate kebele to sa. E pros kate te ti tos kate ti ya. Ska zubra te kebarate kete te. Rekwate te gris kevate sa. E gras ka barate kete kete sa. We enforce it. E disa. E disa. E disa. E disa. Rakabata taskate. Lekwate te skete te. Rakwate te brento sa. E lakwate ti rakate ya. Zate te orate skabarate. Ratasha, zakwate te grete kadi tata, zanda ti kata tata, rakwate te kade kade sha, erato koske te prida bakasha. Name we pray. Amen. Amen. What do we do? We enforce. Prayer is a place to enforce prophecy. 
Thank you, Lord. So I, I know God has said it, but prayer is a place where I what? Enforce prophecy. Why is this important? First Corinthians 16, verse 2. No, look at that. First Corinthians 16. Verse 9. First Corinthians 16, 9. Prayer is a place we what? Enforce prophecy. First Corinthians 69. Can we read together? Want to go? No, let's read together confidently. Want to go? Great dog. Did you hear that? The apostle said, prophecy has opened the door, but there's block. There are people on the way. So prayer will clear them out. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. You have done the first level of interview. For them to call you back now, they say they come in and suspended the interviewing process. What kind of nonsense? Are you here? When it was now your turn to get the visa approval, they say that because of unnecessary delay, we will wait till next till six months. He said the door has been open. But there, there are many adversaries. This is why we pray. So that whatever is coming up, our prayer will clear it. He said, for a great door is open unto me. And if, see, it, listen, listen to me. See how Paul described it. Paul did not say a door. He said a great door. This is a big opportunity. He said not just a great door. An effectual door is open. But this is why you pray. So that whatever is trying to block it, we use power to demobilize them. Some of you, that's what's happening to your job. Some of that's what's happening to your marriage. A great door is open. But you just can't travel. When they say pray, you sleep. When they say fast, you eat. That's why you must take personal responsibility for your own growth. Let me tell you something there. No matter how much your partner prays, it cannot succeed for your own prayers. Daniel chapter 9. I, I, I hope I have the time to share with you. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. Oh, Kabbaladishtish. Oh, wow. The Bible says in, in the reign, John chapter 9, verse 2, in the reign of, of his, in the first reign, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by a number of books, wherefore the word of God that came to Jeremiah the prophet. Question, when it says the word of God that came to Jeremiah the prophet, is that a prophecy? Come on now. Is that a prophecy? Yeah. The Bible says, and for him to know, that means he read the book of us, Jeremiah. Okay? So this was something he read. He said, concerning them that he would accomplish 70 years in the solution of Israel, of Jerusalem. Verse 3. And I set my face to seek the Lord. You know why I saw the Lord? If you read the chapter, the reason why was that, then um, Jeremiah prophesied that they will go into captivity for 70 years. This time around, they had passed 70 years in captivity. But they were not back. So then I said, Lord, what is going on? You say we'll suffer for 70 years. It has passed. Why are we, not, why are we still suffering? The suffering will remain until the man can pray. The suffering will remain. It's not as if God did not hear what he said. But he was looking for a man that could pray. Some of you, it's like that checkbook. Where's that check? You just carry your check on your head. Hey, yes, so oh, they gave me 10 million. Oh, they gave me 10 million. Oh. No, until you pay this to your account, there's no value. Until you pray, that prophecy has no value. You will use prayer to bet the prophecy into manifestation. One song says, when I remember his promises, I shout hallelujah. What does that do for you? Would that one help? It's not about shouting, it's about enforcing. They're not here. Not here. Glory to God. What else do you enforce in your life? When well, I still clear enough time and say, mm -mm, I've noticed something that needs to change. I noticed something that needs to change. In my finances, I, I noticed something that needs to change. Let's go now. You have been trying to buy this your house. Three years has passed. Ah uh ah. -uh. Three years. Instead of you to pray, you'll be doing makeup. Is it ah? Uh, don't worry, if I make up now, he will see me. 
You now spend one hour, 30 minutes making up. And yet he doesn't notice. The reason why is that what you need is not makeup. You need to make you up. Once you are made up, they'll know you for what? Make up. Once you are what? Made up. No need for what? Make up. Once he has approved, you know what can disapprove you. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. I pray for you today. That every prophetic word that has been spoken concerning this year. These are your mighty exploits and laughter. Yes. It will find expression in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Were you blessed by that? Yes, I think we had a great message. Just close and go home. What do you think? Oh. Yeah. All right. Genesis chapter 29, which is our key text on healing emotional wound, verse 31. Just remember that it's for a short time. Can I take off my jacket? So I can have like a different look. So I can feel as if it's another message I'm preaching. Hey, welcome to church again, right? Alright, so, okay, we're just going to jump. Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. Are you there? Yes, sir. So we've been talking about this subject about dealing with emotional wound. And one of the reasons why we're talking about this is this. You know, emotional wound is so broad. There's attachment syndrome, there's avoidance syndrome. Attachment is when people are wounded emotionally and the way they do deal with it, they become overattached to somebody. So that's, and that's a relationship pattern. I don't even know what I'm talking about. So, people that are so hurt, they deal with, they, they become so attached, they become so attached to people, they, and those people find themselves in relationships that abuse them. But the other extreme is also avoidance, that they become so hurt, they don't stay with anybody again. How many of you are avoidant here? You, you've experienced that before. You know, if, would you tell me your story? I know you're an avoidant, that's why I asked you actually. Yeah, I could tell from the time I knew you were an avoidant. Yeah. First of all, come and, come and hug me. That would be a great idea. Give her the microphone. Why is there a microphone her? Let her come and hug me. Why are you walking like this? Yeah. I'm just showing you signs of emotional issues. Did you see that? No, no. I'm just showing you. Because I can pay attention. If you talk to me, Maybe don't talk to me now. Look, I'm looking, looking. I'm just looking at everything you're doing. You know, you know. Did you see that? Like, you know, yeah, just come and get it. Just come on. I'm not begging for it. There's still a lot of work to be done, right? Did you always say, she said, okay. Even her hand says, okay. I know you don't like giving her hugs and all of this kind of thing, but we're going to get there. Because even to see in a dress like this is a miracle. With, you know, nice hair, you know, like earrings. Yeah, tell me. Okay, um, so... Be because, I... if I, I'm going to do it before and after video of huh? her. You did just, I'm just going to just, like, put a video and put it on, yeah. So tell me, yeah. Okay, so avoidance is that um, I find myself, if I feel like I'm trying too much in a relationship, like a friendship or anything, and you're not giving it back to me, I just block you. Like, I block you. You block you, right? I block the person. I don't have time. You don't have time. I don't have time. Yeah. Just block you. You know, so, so, I'm just showing you how, uh, the reason why, let me tell you why I keep asking for con contribution. The reason why is that because this is a, I'm teaching a principle, but it applies to life. But because it applies to people, it manifests in different ways. So, sometimes when I teach you my own experience of the Bible, it's very narrow because that's not able to respond to it. It's like someone said, which is your best food? You will get a variety of answers. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's really good. You know, and, and you know, formerly she only wear trousers, no use makeup. She was, you know, 
And now she's wearing gowns. You can see her she's struggling with the hugging thing. She's coming like she's holding her fist. Like she's like, yeah, let me hug you. I'm like, why are you holding? You know what that means? This all just means I'm not doing this. This is what it means emotionally. Our body and emotion are not agreeing on that. And when I say go, then even she didn't hug me from her heart today. <laughs> now, I'll tell you the reason why. Because when I say hug, you know, I say, yeah, yeah. You know, this minute, let's get it done. And you know what? When I hug her, he said, that's it. She said, it's okay, or that's it. Like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And, and the reason I'm saying so is because she asks, she's a wonderful person and we're learning a lot from her. Exactly. So, Genesis chapter 29, verse 31. And when, Leah saw that Le um, when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, now remember what we said about Leah was suffering an emotional wound and it was not something that had, it was something that happened, that Leah was hated, that God opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Verse 32, let's see the impact of the emotional wound on her. The Bible says, And Leah conceived and buried his son, and she called his name what? Reuben. For she said, The Lord had looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will what? Will love me. When I say, when people go to emotional wound, sometimes they lose something to substitute. So you see, if they are girls, they want to use sex to buy the guy's attention. So they are easy to sleep with. They, you know, not just easy to sleep with, they, go, they, make, they make themselves go through a lot of sexual exercises to think they are sexual. Like, you say, ah, I can do this. They're always, always talking about what they can do, what they can do, what they can do. Like, why do you have to try so much? Because in your mind, you're not enough. And you know you're not enough. And sometimes it to be, you know, I can't sell people, so I know a lot of things. Sometimes it will be girls that are big, that do all sorts. Why are, you, why are the two of you laughing? Something, revelation is happening over there. I don't want to say something, you know. You know, because girls are big, they feel as if, oh, I'm already big. I need something to cover up for my bigness. So, you know, they're like, oh, I, I want to do this. I'm like, The things I found that I cancelled in are very strange. The very beautiful girls are not very sexual. They are very... Yeah. Just things I find that I cancelled like, oh. The people that complain to me that their wife loves a lot of sex more than them, none of them have caught him attention as very, very beautiful girls. No, no, like I'm standing there. I'm not saying anybody's not beautiful, just like in terms of my poor human judgment, you know, that kind of thing. You know, what do I know anyway? <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. I said, Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, I need to be careful. This is on YouTube. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know the, yeah, the word of political correctness, so you have to be really careful. So, back to our conversation on, on healing emotional wounds. So there are two kinds of, so why do wounds need to be healed? Because emotional wound can manifest in relationship attachment patterns. So there's avoidment attachment patterns. There's what? The attachment. So I grew up because of the wounds I had with an, with an emotional, with the attachment patterns. I grew up with the attachment, not the avoidance. So I, I, I drew a lot from people. I drew a lot. I, I mean, I, even till now, I still lean into people. Even till now, one of the best ways I have my best time is to have people around me. Yeah, someone like Pastor, Pastor George now is an attachment, you know, is very attachment kind of person. Someone like Pastor George is avoidant. If you know Pastor George, you know, Pastor George does well with you not talking to him. He has a great time when you don't talk to him. You know, but, you know, that's how he does. But Pastor George, if you don't talk to him, then he talks to you. And that's exactly how I, was, how I am. The same, we have very similar attachment style. So, what does this do? The thing is that, no, every attachment style will begin to self-sabotage your relationship. That's what I'm going to. Every attachment style will begin to what? Self-sabotage your relationship. So I, I don't want to say... Yeah. So one of the things that will... And it will sabotage your relationship because all of the emotional issues... The emotional issues... One of the, one of the key things it does to you is that, like Leah, it makes you just feel that you're not enough. That's what it makes you basically do. So... It's either you're afraid or you have shame or you have fear. There's, you just struggle with that. You just have fear. So when you feel that you're not enough, and this is how very wicked guys, big girls, not even guys, even animal kingdom, when the lion wants to attack prey, it's a group of prey. 
He looks for the weakest. So in the guy world, they say things, never pick the most beautiful girl. Bad guys, former bad guys, raise your hands. Who knows, who, who's heard this before? That guy has, he's smiling, that's it. Why are you telling me? The guy we planted here, you know this, don't you? Give him the microphone, let him tell me what, how he learned it. Yeah, give the microphone. Yeah, where did he learn that from? I don't know anything. <laughs> You look at a man of God and lie. Stand on your feet. Let me tell you the word of the Lord. Ah! Ah! You look at a man of God and lie. Tell me what you know. That, don't, don't worry. No, no pressure. Tell me. But you've heard this before somewhere, yes, right? Yes. I mean, movies, they used to say it. <laughs> oh my God. But when you were in the world, you never went for the beautiful ones. They were the troublesome ones. You went for the non so. I mean, I don't even know how to probably like. What? I, I was not gifted in like um, chasing babes. So I, I mean, I, I didn't. Oh, that know. was a gift, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, I, I was all gifted. What? I was all gifted in like talking to girls. Like, I'm always just all by myself and all that. So. Thank you. Praise God. Which guy has heard this before? You, you heard this, you know, you practice at some point. All the guys are now born again. Let me just pick a guy that I know that will have done this before, like just a random, you know. I can't even see anybody. Yeah, oh, oh in the choir. What? Exactly, come, come, in the choir, yeah. At least that's all that is kind, you know. Not someone that pretends like the other ones in the choir have been and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come, yeah, come and give it up. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, I think it's just normal for, for guys not to chase the most pretty girls because every eye is on them. Hmm. Every eye is on the pretty girl, so, so it's what, easier. What, so what, get, this is psychology. So when all the eyes on the pretty girl, most of the time the pretty girls will have a very good self-esteem. And because they have a self-esteem, they are not in a hurry. They can give you a hard chase. So who do you go for now, sir? If you want to have a quick fix, what do you go for? Just a quick one. Hello. Okay. Yeah. For, for the lady that, that doesn't have um, so much attention, but my spec. Yeah. So, so why do you go for the one that has not so much attention? Because they become very what? Easy for me to do. The reason, so why do they become very easy? The reason basically is that most of the, it's not all the time. That assumption doesn't work 100%. But most of the time, it's always a sign that I am not enough. And that's why sometimes the people that are the most caring when it comes to relationship are those that don't have money. I'm talking about guys. I'm about guys. They will come and pick you at work, take you back at work. Because, you know, some of them don't even have a card. They will come and use, they will come with a taxi. I say, babe, I'm downstairs. I brought the Uber. Because maybe you are going to pay for the Uber or the you guys are going to share it. But the reason why is that, the reason, because some of you think, and this is why when you're married, you say they change. They didn't change. They didn't have voice. This is voice. So as they grew and they had voice, they began to adapt to reality that they have a voice now. Glory to God. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wonder what's going on online. I wonder what they are saying online. Okay, let's go back. Let's get back to this. I don't want to say. So, what does emotional things do? So, number one, it appears sometimes. Uh, so, when you have those tendencies, there's a, there's a feeling of unworthiness, which we saw in Leah. Leah just felt she was unworthy. So, the question is that, how do you, how do you, cap, how do you overcome these things? You need to be able to capture them down. So, when do I feel unworthy? Younger girls, I will tell you here, one of the scheme of older people that are rich is to intimidate you with the money. In fact, one of our pastors used to tell me, he said, when we were in school together, he said, one of the things he used to do was that when he, he was, he was still had a car, which was an abnormally when I was in school, he said, it would make sure that the money for like the house bill or things like that, they had to do, was with him. 
So anytime he picked up a girl, he would just put a girl in the car, front seat, drive the girl. Like, uh, where's my glasses? Please, can you check the, the glove compartment? And the girl just opened it and see bundles of money. <gasps> 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 Do you know? But that is the intention. That, that, and that is the And they said, oh, it always worked because all of a sudden, the girl just like, oh, let's have sex. They were sure we can have sex because they are very rich. You know, you know that kind of thing. But the reason why is that we put ourselves in a situation where they can intimidate us. And that intimidation is not just from them, it's also from us because there's a sense of unworthiness that we carry. So, what happens is that we will deny our emotion to please their own emotions. So that's the first thing. I wanted to watch out for the sense of unworthiness. So how do I correct it? Can I begin to write all this time I feel unworthy and begin to write how I would choose to behave. I need to begin to see myself. You know, the way I was trained to be unworthy, I need to begin to train myself to what? To be worthy. I need to do something calm. So I need to ask myself, what triggers this feeling of unworthiness? What makes me feel? What do they say, do? What do I go that I have? I manifest this way. And this is the reason why some of you keep on attracting the wrong people. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So the first thing is that, then I spoke about the second one, which is the shame, the fear, and the constant guilt. And the third reason also is the fear of abandonment. And this is very terrible because when people get married, this is why they stay in an abusive marriage. This is why people stay in an abusive relationship. Just the fear of what's abandoned, that if I leave now, who will stay with me? And why I don't advocate for divorce, I believe that life is before divorce. What does that mean? Anything that threatens your life, Divorce is, not divorce is never a topic again. Because it's only someone that's alive that can stay in a marriage. So when someone says um, divorce is an option, it's because life has not entered. When life enters, divorce is an option. What does that mean? Anything that threatens your life. I'm saying it to you. If someone is threatening you and beating you and killing you, he said, you can't leave. Leave. Because it's only someone that's alive. That we can talk about the marriage. When you have left, we cannot talk about how to deal with the best things issues. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Okay. So I, I wanna I wanna finish. I, I wanna finish this. Just yeah. So when you have all of these emotional issues, how does it affect your relationship? What happens in the relationship that you begin to self-sabotage? What, what is another word for self-sabotage? Can you give me, Pastor George, can you give me a word? Self-sabotage. Stacy, can you give me a word? Pastor Stacy. Self-sabotage uh, something. You would, you would spoil it yourself. You would spoil it yourself. Yeah. So most of, most, for those in marriage, you will gradually work towards breaking your marriage. You will partner with each other to be break your marriage. Then those that are single, you will make sure your relationship does not work. You will work towards it. Let me show you what, how this means. Let me show you how this means. Yeah. So for example now, look at Leah. Instead of her to work with intimacy with her husband, she was given to children. That given to children, guess what it did for her? She said, children will get my husband's attention, but that's not what it did for her. So her, her affection went towards the kids. So she was even, so even the small time she had to compete for his attention, it went towards the kid and it was a person about self-sabotage. Glory to God. How do you self-sabotage? When people have emotional issues, one of the things they do is that they continually look for what is wrong in the marriage, in the relationship, or in their partners. The reason why is that because they're already negative, they, it fills them well. The second thing that happens is this, I want to show you. They expect their partner to think and act like them. Yeah. I want to rush through this. Number three is that they read a lot into small things. They read a lot into small things. I know, I'll give an example. There was a, there was a case in, our ch in church, someone's um, brother, and the lady had come to the house and had broken the car. I said, what happened? He said, the lady came into the house. The house was on. The AC was on and all of those kind of things. Of course, there's background to it. AC was all those kind of things. But he was calling the husband and the husband not come out. And the girl said, I know that there's a woman in this house. That's why you are not coming out. 
and he broke the car and destroyed it. Then you come out and pick the car. After she'd been breaking the car, the guy walked out into from the gate. And I said, what did you do? He said, I thought you were in the house with a woman. And then you didn't want to come out. And they broke this. Two things. I don't think the woman is crazy. I think there's a history. Because that's really extreme. But the other thing I want to say is that if you're that kind of person that reads into details in every tiny thing, most of the time, it's not what is done, it's your interpretation. I'm telling you, so what is on the phone? Why are you chatting with? When you come there, what did you go to? Why are you coming late today? And the reason why you feel that way is because of the emotional attachment syndrome you have is playing in this field. Okay, who knows what I'm talking about? Who's expressed this before? Wait, 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 wait. Did you raise up your hand? You have? She knows? Give her the microphone. She's my friend. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Just give it to her. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so it happened in my relationship. I always read meaning into every little thing that happened. Why is Give me three, three things and how you read meaning into it. Okay, why is he not texting back? Is he with another person? So when he doesn't text back, all that comes to your mind is, is he with another person? Yes. That's one. Another situation. Um, why, is, why is he online and um, not calling me? <laughs> why is he online? I know. What, like, what, online I can see like um, Twitter messages, um, Twitter posts, and um, also WhatsApp status, but, you know, there's no text. So why are you not texting? So why is he not texting you? I mean, every time he's online, he should be texting you, right? Yes. Oh, wow. Does he have a job? <laughs> I just wanted to know if he has a job. <laughs> okay, that's great. The third one. I think that's just that, that's it. So so do you all of us are laughing, but do you see how that but those things will torment her? Is it not true? Yes. Don't they torment you? Yes. Why do you think that way? Honestly. Yeah, what? I d I don't know honestly why I think that we both. Are you very clingy? Mm. Are you very are you clingy? You don't know. I don't know. You don't know. Does it think you're clingy? Yes. You think so? Then you are. The reason why I ask you if you're clingy is that because the, you, you are manifesting behaviors of an attachment, you know, of, you, you, I, I could just say it. So that's why every time you can't get that, you, because you're very, you're, you're super attachment conscious, every time you get it, you interpret it as a form of pain to you. Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So, what, what, so, so as a young child, were you abandoned? No. As a young, tell me about your parents and how you were raised. Are you the last child? Yes, I am. Okay, that's attachment. Yeah, I can see it. You, you, because it comes. So if you're abandoned, if you're abandoned, if you if you grew by yourself, you have the tendency to always long for it. But if you were the last child and everybody gave you the attention, you have a tendency to think that that's the norm. So, you, so you, what you can't get your way, you throw tantrums to your boyfriend, right? Yes. Like, what do you do? I block him. You block him. Wow. A lot of you have the gift of blocking in this church, right? Please, anytime you want to block him or her, remember I'm praying for you, pity me. I'm praying for you that you get married. Just think of my prayers. I'm like, if you keep blocking, who will get you married? Praise God. And another person, another person, another person that has, yeah, another person. We're sharing church. Yeah, there's a lady over there. Why are the men not sharing? Okay. <laughs> so that's all that I reached up my hand before you. Yeah. Okay, so mine was, I was dealing with somebody that wanted to be on video call every second. My name changed from my original name to Babe. My, when I went for work, it was always like, oh, you didn't tell me before you go out. Um, I work too, but I'm still calling you on video call. Uh, <laughs> it's not right. You don't know. I love you. I love you. You have to reciprocate the love. Um, you can't go out wearing a certain type of clothes. Uh, different things. And then. Do you ask him why he wanted to see your video call all the time? <laughs> My friend here literally was. She said, So yeah, go for me. I don't want this person for you. And we kept. She was really very vocal. He was rude. He was condescending. Everybody else was not as good as him everybody was he was smarter than everybody else and for somebody like me i did I'm, you ask him let me tell you something everybody <laughs> listen to me 
If you want to change someone or change someone's perspective, ask them questions. Not abusive questions, just say, ah, wow, you, you love video calls. Why do you like video calls? <laughs> Did you ask him that question? I asked him. What who, did he say? I asked him what my question was very direct. I'm like, who hurt you so bad? No, 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 no. He's going to say nobody. Did he didn't say nobody? He literally usually said that at the beginning of our relationship, I was very obliged to talking to him. And I literally told him, I'm like, you were sick, you're suffering from an, you were suffering from something. I was trying to be there for you. And also that there, I was also trying to get to know you better where's that course. relationship right now oh i threw it away because i'm i'm <laughs> i literally told every second at the smallest issues i get blocked the smallest issues i get blocked did you see how attachable did you see how good attachable them always behave all of them block 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 did you see how they me, this was even worse i could just not pick my call and then my friend and all of us are blocked already it was extended to my oh, friend oh, hold on once you don't pick your heart, it will block your face. We are blocked, friends. everybody, both of us. <laughs> that guy was crazy. Please invite him for the fourth service. <laughs> the next sign of people that have this kind of problem is that they always play tit for tat. Uh, forgiveness is not that they always play for tit for tat. You know what I'm telling you, so that you can bring them. Because you've experienced it, you know them. Some of them are your friends. Some of you dated them. You can help them. They pay teeth for that. You can send them the video. Oh, you said they are blocked. The last one I will share is this. They always expect without asking. They just... And, and let me tell you something. That's a very poor marriage, marital skill. To expect without asking. And it happens to both men and women. It's really terrible for you to think that someone can meet your need without asking. You must know that nobody is God. Nobody can read your mind. If your marriage or relationship with God is going to work, you must say, ask and you shall be given. Not, mm, and it shall be given. Ask and you shall be given. And you know why people don't ask? People don't ask because of the shame of rejection. Question, why do you want to be in a relationship with someone they think that will reject you? Let me say something to you about asking. You must settle it. Nobody can meet on your needs. So there are times I'm going to ask I will get. There are times I will ask I will not get. That's life. That's not rejection. That's life. Your definition of rejection is outrated. And this will deliver someone today. They, and I'm closing with this. There are times in life you will ask and you will get. Even your parents, did you get all the time? How come a woman can give you all the time? Then how come a man can give you all the time? You must have enough self-esteem to be like, it's okay. There are sometimes someone say, that's why I don't ask. But if you don't ask, you'll not be happy. Uh -huh. Give them the microphone. They want to give me what they're saying. Give her, because they are arguing now. No, 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 no. You don't need to tell me what you are saying. Give her the microphone. Give her, give her. On, on the third row, give her, give her. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me to the microphone what you are saying. Tell her, tell her she wants to hear. Yes, two of you are discussing during the message. Yeah, tell me, yeah. Um, sorry. What's your name? My name is Sukomi. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so I, what we're saying was for someone like me, I don't like to ask because yeah. I don't like someone to disgrace me because. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for something. I understand that, yeah, you may not be able to give it to me at all times. It's understandable, so it's just once in a while. But if I'm dating you, I mean, you should know. How would you know? <laughs> you, will, you will know. I mean, you... you How would you know? They, they, indirectly. So, so, come so, so do, do you think your ego, you have a big ego? Do you think so? A little bit. You think so, right? Your friend says you have a big ego. Don't you think your ego is speaking right now? Do you hope to get married? Yes. Do you think ego works good in marriage? No, it doesn't. It's a choice. You can keep your ego or keep your relationship. It's a choice. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says the two were naked and were not ashamed. Marriage involves stripping yourself. You know why you're that way? Because someone really offended you. Someone did that to you. Who is the person? The Bastion. 
It's better to share it and let it off your chest. Just give me a narrow perspective. Who is the person? Okay, so I'm not really, I'm not the kind of person that is very emotional in quotes. And I yeah. think I am also at the same time. It's, yeah. a, it's a blend of both because I, I basically know how to um, easily let go. So what, what did this, how did you become like this? I don't, I don't know which one. Cause because I, I'm the, actually being honest. I'll tell you what. Because I think about relationships, but I think it would be the family. And I, of course you know it is. The reason why you're thinking that it's relationship, because you think the relationship, but I know it's a family. So, Will, tell me about that. Wow. Okay, so, um, so my dad, uh, my parents were, t my parents are no longer together. So, they were, I really like trusted my dad for a very long time. And it was funny how I heard that there was another child from neighbors. This was like back in 20, I was in secondary school. And so it's what she's saying. Our father got a neighbor pregnant. So you can tell how deep this is. Continue, please. Uh, no, he didn't get my neighbor pregnant. Okay. Like, I got to know from my neighbors. Oh, from the neighbors. Oh, so, from the neighbors. like, okay. everybody knew. My, I didn't oh, know. My okay. mom didn't know. Oh, okay, yeah. And it was, it was really terrible. I was really young, but I was, like, 15. There about. So it's something that I've never forgotten. And for me, I remember my neighbors then. We did, like, a meeting. How does that make you feel when you heard? And even to you now. I don't trust anybody. So you say the thing, because you don't trust anybody, you can also lean on anybody. Because you can lean on anybody, you can also ask anybody. So all the while you think it's the guys, all the while it's you. And the reason why is that in every man that comes, you see a choice of your father. He could be this way. I need to be careful. Yes or no? Yes. You know the unfortunate thing? You attract what is familiar. The more that stays in your head, that's the kind of person you marry. And that's why you're here today. Because you need to do away with that and create another image of yourself. Because, you know, I saw her really argue with a point with a friend. I really argued her. And I did her, oh wow, okay. This seems to be really hot. And all her life, she thought it's a man. She thought it was Banke or Lamide or Victor or John. But really, you are the common denominator. And the reason why is that you see all the men, you see a little trace of your dad in them. And you're watching them. And you're watching them. You're watching them. Is that not true? I mean, before I even go in, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a serious about thinker right now. So before I date anybody, like I'm thinking of one million and one things. So once you do any small thing, I don't have time. I would have blocked you since. And... I'm, I'm actually, no, I'm, I'm very no, no, serious. No, no, no. I, I agree with you. But the question is, are you happy? Career-wise, yes, I'm happy. But yeah. I tend to cover the relationship with the fact that I'm doing well career-wise. So I'm like, we'll be fine at the end of the day. So, so let me ask you, in 10 years' time, if you continue this, where will you be? Don't tell me. You have the microphone. In 10 years' time, just tell me, just describe your future in 10 years' time. You've hit one of the peak of the careers. Are you going home? How will you be going home? Like, will he pick you up or you will not be there? Will he be a single mom or you? You'll go home and you have this nice house in Banana and you go inside and lay on the couch and... I'll have someone. Is that what you really think with, with where you are right now? The reason why is that I'm trying to confront you with the reality that if you don't change, that this could be the future. I'm not God, so I can't say this is it. But what is happening is that that thing of your dad, because you, you, you know, as soon as I said, who did it to you? You went, you're not sure which of them. But I knew it was not them. And it was from the parents. Let me close with this. Oh, Lord, help me. Why is it so hard to forgive your dad? Because I know you're not forgiving him.
I don't know. I, I feel like I have forgiven him. I'm not sure. But you, 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 yeah, you forgive him because you talk to him, but why does he still hurt you a lot? Because we had, we had a really close relationship. It was always me and my dad, so I didn't see that coming. So you felt he deceived you? Oh, yes, he did. Have you forgiven him for that? Is he alive? Yes, he is. Why don't you just ask him, Dad? Why didn't you tell me? I can tell you why I didn't tell you. The reason why I didn't tell you was this, and I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to talk to you like a little girl. It's because he looked at you, and his dream was to be that father and that mentor to you. And he failed himself in a moment. And he don't know how to tell you that I failed. And he thought the best thing he would do was to hide it. From your perspective, he deceived you. From his perspective. I'm disappointed with myself. I'm afraid of what her reaction will be. Maybe I should prevent her from this. Can you see this in his mind right now? Is this a possibility that a work will have happened? Tell me. Maybe, maybe, but... Or do you want to also deny you that it deceived you and that's why intentionally wanted to hurt you and it deceived you? Is that your father that wicked? No. So what could his life done it? He was afraid. There are things you hid from your parents right now. Is that not true? Why have you not told them? You're so afraid. You are either afraid or you're ashamed. Oh, wow. So you are things you're hiding because you're afraid and ashamed. What about him? Your parents are just a few years older than you are when you grow up. Now we realize they're just like 20, 30 years older than you. And you will get there. Tell me what's going on in your mind. So... I feel like if it was just you getting someone pregnant, it's understandable to an extent because yeah. I was the only child yeah. and my mom's family was, they stood by him. Yeah. But it's the fact that even after the whole thing, you stayed with the woman and left me and my mom. Okay. So it's, it's a whole lot. It's something you can't, I, I, I for my you. mom, I can't, I can't just forgive that or forget about that. It's not easy. Okay, but, but I thought you'd forgiven it. Have you forgiven it? I'm human, so... No, I just asked a question. I'm, I'm also human. Have you forgiven it? Working on it. You need to be very honest with yourself. Your father is alive, right? Have a conversation with him. You will never know. You will never know. You know, you know, I came from a polygamous family. So, my father had multiple houses together. Each wife stayed in the house. Away from each other. So, my father was a rotating husband. <laughs> rotating husband and rotating father. But we stayed the father, so it was difficult to connect with us. And I thought that where he stayed primarily, they had the best of life. When we grew older, they complained so much about my dad. I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't know that his name was a blessing. <laughs> the reason why is that it's until you go to the other side and look, you will be surprised what you see. Because from your own side now, I thought my father deprived us. So, so some of the things I thought they enjoyed, they were privileged. He said, it wasn't like that. It was like this. I said, oh, wow. It's just like all of you that have very strict mothers and people that think they are very kind and merciful. Because it's the side they see. They're like, ah, your mother is the sweetest person in this world. She's so generous. She's so this. They're like, because it's the side of your mom that they see. They've not seen what? The other side. I'm not saying that I support your dad. But I think that you need to release yourself. Your, my concern is not even your dad. My concern is you. It's about how that is holding you back. Your eyes are teary. Your emotions are very shaky. I can tell. You know, I can tell a lot of heat is going through your body in terms of emotion right now. 
But I can tell you that you will not have a stable relationship until you deal with this. You're going to be moving towards so much emotions together. Instead of, let me tell you, instead of overthinking, just ask. I say, Dad, I'm not condemning you. It's your life and it be the way you want it. But I just need perspective that will help me balance my head. And if you don't want to ask him, then create a story for yourself that gives you peace. Because the story you have is troubling you right now. You don't have to ask him, but create a story for yourself. Create a story for yourself that he was so ashamed, he moved out of the house. But you need a story that can give you peace. And I'm saying that, let me close with this. And I'm saying to all of you, all of you here, every time you have something you cannot control, there are things you can control. But something you can't control, create a story that gives you peace. I learned from Joseph. What did Joseph say? His brother said, don't kill us. So he said, no. Joseph gave it a meaning. They sold him into slavery. He said, God sent me ahead of you. He gave himself a story that gave him peace. Because your story will affect your belief. Your belief will affect your behavior. So create a story that gives you peace. I was the child who was neglected by my, by my parents. But you know what I tell myself? If my parents don't neglect me, I'll never be a pastor. Never! The way I found myself in church was the neglect. The church became my solace. So all the church brothers were like my brothers and sisters and fathers. I spent hours with them until all of these things rubbed off on me. So I was like, oh wow, God needed to do that so that I can go through this route today. And the reason why I can teach emotional intelligence and emotional days and all of this is because I've been crushed, I've been wounded, I'm growing. I'm not even perfect sometimes. I ruin it sometimes. But I'm here. Because I've been through it. So, what do you think? My father had two wives. My father had more than two wives. I had a British stepmom. I had a Jamaican stepmom. Do you have international stepmothers? No. Your father is a local player. Your father is a local player. Your father is a local player. We play international. What do you mean? What do you play? So, so, you know what I think about? The comfort I've received, I can use to comfort other people. See the meaning I gave to that. Oh, the Father, you knew that I was going to help a lot of people. So you took me through this special experience so that I can help people. Oh, wow, you were so smart, oh God. Because that story gives me peace. But well, that's why I can be like, God, what did I do to you? God, why? Why me? Sometimes it still hurts. Sometimes I think about things and I just, you just have a tear in my eye like, oh wow. Oh, that was just a short, you know, that kind of thing. You know, like, I don't, I don't know my father's friends, I knew one. My father had loads of friends, but I don't know my father's friends because my side of the family were never really close to his friends. Always look for the blessing in your mess. Always look for what? The blessing in your mess. Let's pray. How do you feel now? Come get a hug. Come, come, come. Where are you? Come get a hug. Oh, your friend was going to hug you first. You're proud of her, right? Can this is a new beginning? Come, come and get a hug. So, let me take a picture. So, I start dating and get married. Remember me. <laughs> Especially if your husband is a governor, just remember that. <laughs> this pastor helped a lot. Stand on your feet, everyone. Let's pray. How do you feel? It's okay. You feel ripped open today. For someone that's not emotional, that is having tears in her eyes. Where's the microphone? Let me give you a microphone. It's okay. You've just been human. Tell me. I'm good. I feel okay. Yeah, that's a coping mechanism. That's what she does when she wants to cope. She tells herself that. So tell me how you feel. That's good. <laughs> I feel like 
host. <laughs> um, but that's what God does. He opens us up and he covers us back. I, I probably covered that today. Maybe, I don't know. You didn't know today was your day, right? No. I shouldn't have said anything. But, it's fine. but you kind of have clarity today, right? Yes, I do. You know what to do now, right? Yes. Is there some kind of peace you feel within? Within the troubled heart and the exposure, do you feel as if, okay, what yeah. do you, huh? I guess I understand. I understand better and I, I know where to start from, so. Awesome, you're good. Praise God. Join your hands to someone, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Well, thank you because we're praying that you heal everyone here. Thank you for always being a blessing through your word and the spirit. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right.